paper by Alan McDonald and Chen Liu. They point out that the spin uh, conductance, spin hole conductance is universal, okay? E divided by A pi. But in the meantime, uh, about one year later, a group in Oak Ridge National Lab, they point out that uh, with a spin angular momentum current, uh, you also have an orbital angular momentum current. But uh, uh, interestingly, the con conductivity will be the same as spin hole conductivity, but with the opposite sign. So in reality, they, in a sense, they, con they say that uh, you cannot observe spin hole effect in two-dimensional electron gaps. Okay? But I've been working on a magnetic material uh, for real solid for a long time. My uh, initial instinct told me that uh, this cannot happen because orbital angular momentum is always quenched in real solid. Okay? So, but I needed to prove that. Okay, now the, the other motivation include the band structure model of Zhang Shoucheng use, look like that, okay? Real band structure for Gary Mars and I look like that. So this is spherical symmetric, and this is not a spherical symmetric. And there was some uh, argument that maybe in real solid, you, you will have no spin hole effect, okay? Now, that may be associated with particular property of Latinian model. So again, somebody needed to do a calculation for real solid to show whether there is spin hole effect or not. Now, another interesting question is that I mentioned before, uh, Sam Sosen and the Nagaosa, they treat this as Dirac monopole. Okay, we know that when you make semiconductor device, you use multi layers. Okay, you choose very close lattice. I mean, to make a multi-layer, but nevertheless, you always have maybe less than 1% of uh, lattice mismatch. And then, this lattice mismatch will introduce strength. And that strength will destroy this uh, direct monopole. Okay? Now, the question is whether uh, semiconductor under strength will have a uh, spin hole effect or not. Okay? So, that's another question I can ask and uh, try to answer. Now, as I mentioned before, the latest interest is actually in metal because uh, metal can give rise to room temperature, large uh, spin hole effect, and it can have real application. But metal has a very complicated band structure, much complicated than the band structure I showed you earlier. Okay? So this model Hamiltonian will be difficult to construct and uh, may not be accurate. Now, uh, let me be briefly introduce uh, the theoretical formalism we use. There are many ways uh, uh, to calculate uh, spin hole conductivity. Okay? Now here I'll just show you the elegant way to do that. And that's the uh, so-called belly phase formalism. Okay? So what's belly phase? Um, suppose we have a system described by a Hamiltonian which contains variable parameters. They, let's call it lambda, okay? Then, if you change these parameters, the eigenvalue of the system will change slowly, but they will not cross each other, okay? So this slow process is called a diabetic process, okay? Now, and you also learned in quantum mechanics that uh, um, we have wave, wave function. Wave function can be written as two part. One would be uh, look like that, and the other it can be written as a phase, okay? And that's called dynamic phase. And this phase, uh, your professor will tell you that if you take uh, this wave function complex conjugate, okay, that's all that is meaningful. And then this uh, dynamic phase will cancel out, so it, it doesn't mean anything. However, Bailey uh, in 1984 pointed out that if you change this parameter slowly, and the system will move in the parameter space during the process. The system wave function will acquire additional phase. That's called he called geometric phase. Now it's called belly phase. Okay, um, this belly phase uh, is uh, very similar to a. Okay, now let me. The, so this belly phase uh, can be written as a, a line integral. Of a vector, look like a vector in our electromagnetism. Okay, then you can use Stokes theory and look like a, a flux. And this uh, 
quantity called uh, gauge field is called belly curvature. Okay, can be written like that. And this belly curvature exactly look like a magnetic field in real space. Okay, so you can see that the belly curvature, magnetic field, uh, belly connection, vector potential, and this churn number equ equivalent to uh, Dirac monopole, which people are still looking for. Okay, now, um, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of this uh, uh, transport property in solid, and this belly phase has a very interesting effect. Uh, when I was a graduate student, I learned or well, English textbook, I use Ashcroft Mermaid. Okay, now if you look at the semi-classical transport theory part, the textbook will tell you that the the Bloch electron velocity is simply the gradient of band structure in K space. Okay? And uh, the force experienced would be electric field and also Lorentz force. Electric field can be written as a electric potential uh, gradient in real space. Okay? Now you can see that uh, we are missing something here. And from an uh, uh, elegant theoretical point of view, then uh, these are not symmetric. Okay? And people can be uncomfortable about that. Okay? And uh, this indeed, Chen Liu and uh, his uh, student, Zhang Ming Zhe in Sida, when he was doing PhD, and they realized that uh, if you now take belly phase into account, so you need to add additional term like that. Okay? That's belly curvature and that's velocity, uh, momentum velocity uh, there. Now, the, these two equations become symmetric, and that's uh, uh, and this is uh, now new uh, semi uh, transport uh, equation. Okay, now if you plug this uh, into expression for electric current, and you get the two terms. This is ordinary conductivity you have, and due to non-equilibrium distribution of carrier, uh, due to electric field. Now, in addition, you have uh, this term, which is uh, uh, you, uh, you, you can get it by integral very curvature in momentum space, but this is perpendicular to apply electric field. And that's, that's transverse uh, current. Okay? And this term gives you give rise to enormous hole conductivity. And for the first time, uh, Chen Liu's student uh, uh, performed a uh, realistic calculation and explained the enormous hole conductivity uh, uh, con uh, a normal Hall effect in ion uh, uh, discovered by Evan Hall more than 100 years ago. Okay, now we can use this kind of formalism to calculate spin Hall conductivity. Okay, as I mentioned before, all this enormous Hall effect, spin Hall effect, and the intrinsic Hall effect are due to relative spin orbit coupling. Okay, so then to to calculate this kind of conductivity. You need to, uh, based on your band structure, uh, with the relativity effect include. Okay. Now one can solve Dirac equation or Schrodinger equation with the spin orbit coupling as perturbation. But originally we chose to solve this uh, Dirac Hamiltonian. Then you get the band structure, and then you plug into this uh, uh, belly, uh, plug into this expression to get get the belly curvature integrate over blue and so, then you can get the, uh, this uh, conductivity. Now, if you use charge current operator, you get the enormous hole conductivity. If you use spin current operator, you get the spin hole conductivity, okay? And then if you use angular momentum current operator, you get angular momentum uh, uh, hole effect. So within this uh, formalism, you can get all this very interesting intrinsic Hall effect uh, in a single formalism. Okay, so we first apply, well, in the first first time, we apply to semiconductor. Okay, so uh, this is the, the main result of this uh, kind of calculation. Uh, first, this uh, show um, spin hole conductivity as a function of hole concentration. Okay, you can see that uh, if you uh, uh, increase hole doping and to a certain level, this uh, spin hole conductivity increased dramatically up to order of about 100. Okay? 
for silicon, it's small because silicon has a small atomic number. But now the important is that uh, we have orbital angular momentum for conductivity, which is at least 10 times smaller than uh, uh, spin hole conductivity. So this immediately tells you that uh, in real semiconductor, the spin hole conductivity will not be cancelled by uh, orbital angular momentum hole conductivity. And these are real material. So also answer the question, uh, in real material, you still can have a spin hole conductivity. Now, this uh, diagram answers the third question about uh, a strain effect. As I said before, when you apply strain to a semiconductor, this uh, direct monopole singularity will be removed. Okay? We open a gap. You can see if you apply tensile strain and gap open, if you compress semiconductor, the gap also open. However, spin hole conductivity does not disappear. Okay? It's still there. So uh, this uh, basically answers uh, uh, several questions I mentioned before. Now, um, as I mentioned before, for spintronic application, uh, it's more important to study uh, metals. Okay? Not only it has a larger and uh, at room temperature uh, uh, conductivity, it also uh, is more robust. Okay? So uh, then I move this, uh, uh, this kind of formalism and uh, apply it to aluminum and platinum. Okay? So for aluminum, we got the spin hole conductivity at the low temperature about 17, which is in the same order of magnitude report by Tinkan's group. But surprisingly, when uh, we uh, look at the spin hole conductivity at the platinum, you see that uh, it's uh, two order of magnitude larger than aluminum. Okay? We have at the zero temperature 2000. Okay? And it's enormous. This is spin hole conductivity uh, plot as a function of Fermi level. You can, with a rich band model, you can assume Fermi level going up and going down. Okay? But uh, it happened that uh, we have peak at the Fermi level in this case. Okay, now, what's uh, we, I mean, we are physicists. We always ask uh, what's going on and uh, why it happened. Okay? So then we needed to go back to basic. Basically, we need to look, to look at the expression we use to get spin hole conductivity, i.e., in terms of so called spin churn number, okay? uh, spin curvature, sorry, spin barrier curvature. Okay? Now, here I plot spin barrier curvature uh, for each k point and for each band. You can see that uh, most of them are very boring, very flat. But here you have pair occur okay? with a sharp uh, uh, delta like going down and the sharp delta like going up and uh, also pair here and pair here and pair here, okay? Now, where this pair occur? So if we look at the band structure, uh, sorry. if we look at band structure here, there's a crossing here, okay? Uh, by the way, this are uh, two set of band structure. The red one is without spin optic coupling. The blue one is with spin optic coupling, okay? And the gap, it's very big because the platinum is a he very heavy, atomic number of 78. Okay? So spin orbit coupling is huge. So the gap will be about 1 EV. Now, whenever uh, this accidental crossing uh, degeneracy is lifted, you will see uh, a two peak, one with, uh, you know, going this way and the other going that way. Now, if these uh, two bands are both occupied, then the contribution will be cancelled because one is positive and the other is negative. Okay? However, imagine that if one is unoccupied and the, one is, the other one is occupied, then this cancellation will not happen. And this is exactly happening uh, in this case. Okay? You can see that the spin orbit coupling uh, split the band, push one above the Fermi level and the other going down. Okay? And then we have uh, one occupy uh, give rise to negative barrier curvature here, and then give rise to a P in the Boolean zone uh, at the L point, and similar occurring here. So now we understand that uh, that's because we are uh, the Fermi level in platinum is occurring at the spin orbit split uh, band gap, and give rise to huge spin orbit coupling. Okay. Now, when uh, our paper 
published was criticized by many people. People think that uh, uh, this uh, was definitely not due to intrinsic. Okay, so for example, compared with Otani's paper, they found uh, at room temperature is 200, but we put it 2,000. But nevertheless, um, after talking to many people, and uh, then people cool it down, for example, the same group, they found that uh, this uh, uh, spin hole conductivity can go up to uh, 1,700 at uh, 5 Kelvin, okay? Uh, 50 Kelvin or 5 Kelvin. Oh, my spectacle is not good now. Um, okay, then uh, many people now uh, did experiment on platinum. I, uh, uh, in particular, Hoffman originally think that uh, it's due to extrinsic after he came to Taiwan, and uh, I, I discussed quite a few times with him. He now is convinced that this indeed is due to intrinsic effect. Now, the significance of this is that this is uh, the largest intrinsic uh, spin hole effect system discovered so far. So, it has many applications. You, as I mentioned before, used to, to take spin seabank effect, spin pumping, and spin hole. Uh, a switch. You can see all this uh, paper published in Nature. I know uh, now it's, uh, our university is pushing everybody to publish this kind of paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that's the end of the story or not? Um, okay, now we also apply this method to calculate gold. Okay, we predict that the spin hole effect in gold is, uh, is much small, but nevertheless it's, it's still quite significant. Okay, about 100. So, um, but the life is, uh, is always uh, full of twists, okay? And uh, research, uh, from my point of view, always give us a surprise uh, from now and then, okay? And this is a paper published by Sato I mentioned before. When they measure a spin hole in gold hole bar, spin hole effect in gold hole bar, and accidentally they found that the spin hole effect can be uh, 10,000. Okay, or more. Okay, this is really gigantic. A uh, two order magnitude than the spin hole effect I mentioned before in platinum. Now, of course, the question is why this happened? Because uh, uh, certainly this is not uh, due to intrinsic effect because uh, my calculation already showed that the uh, uh, intrinsic effect will be uh, two, two or three times, uh, uh, two or three order magnitude small. Okay, now in uh, then one, one of the mechanisms they propose is that the gold 111 surface has a huge rush bar spin of its splitting, okay? So this can be one of the mechanisms. But uh, from my point of view, when I look at the paper again, you see this is the TEN image of uh, gold hall bar, and they made this using sputtering, okay? Okay, now experiment people know that the sputtering can be very dirty. I don't know. I'm a theoretician. But uh, <laughs> obviously, when you sputter uh, platinum ion, some of ion and platinum may, may be incorporated in the gold hole bar. Okay? So my suspicion can be justified. So I, instead of considering surface effect, I consider defect effect, impurity. Okay? Here, I show you, uh, I consider vacancy, you knock out one gold atom, or you replace one gold atom with platinum, or you replace one uh, gold atom with iron. Okay. Now this is the electronic density that I got. You can see that if you knock out one gold atom, the band structure and uh, more or less unchanged. Okay. So that cannot be due to uh, gold vacancy. But then you look at the uh, case where one gold atom is replaced by uh, platinum. You can see this impurity uh, uh, bound state occurring here, very prominent. But it's uh, about 1.5 EV below the Fermi level. Okay? And then uh, if we look at the ion impurity, you find a prominent peak sitting right at the Fermi level. Now if we further uh, perform spin polarized calculation and consider on-site Coulomb interaction, and this impurity will become, uh, we have a local moment with a spin up now, uh, level move into the gold valence band. However, the, uh, the spin up band split uh, and into two groups. One is so called T2G group, and the other is called 
sorry, this is T2G group and the EG group. T3 group can look like an uh, orbital angular moment equal to 1, okay? Although it's a D electron. Now, so after we got this band structure, then we uh, propose that uh, in the gold uh, case, because of ion impurity, they may occur so called multi orbital condor effect. And the condor effect can give rise to very strong scattering, okay? And uh, that can give rise to <coughs> Uh, spin hole uh, conduct, uh, conductivity observed uh, I mentioned before. Now, of course, we needed to prove that. But before I show you the result, let me, uh, there are a lot of students in the audience, they, they introduce briefly condo effect. This is a classic many body effect in condensed matter. Okay? Um, in 1930s, a Dutch physicist called De Haas. Um, uh, he measure resistivity, then you cool a sample down and the resistivity will go uh, linearly decrease and to a certain temperature. And then he found that in the gold sample, uh, it can go up again. Okay? And this is an enormous phenomenon. And, uh, and people could not understand at that time. Okay? And then, of course, people do a lot of experiments and eventually they realize there are magnetic impurity in the gold. In 1960, uh, Jim Kondo from Japan, he proposed a Kondo model, okay? Look like this is free electron Hamiltonian. Then you add a uh, coupling term, which is magnetic impurity spin moment coupled with a conduction electron spin moment. And this is anti ferromagnetic coupling, okay? Then he saw this model uh, using second order perturbation. And then uh, realized that uh, at a low temperature, in addition to this linear dependent term, okay, and this is residual resistivity, you have this uh, a term which is proportional to log temperature. Okay, so as you uh, lower the temperature, and this definitely gives rise to a, a sharp increase in resistivity. So because Kondo explained this experimental result, so this experiment is now instead of called the Haas effect, it's called Kondo effect. Okay? So, um, but this is classical many-body effect in, in solid-state phase. And for multi-orbital condo effect, we propose a still unsolved problem. Okay, now, of course, in, in, we, we are theoretician. We need at least to give tangible estimate in order to convince people, okay? So this will be just uh, uh, quantum mechanics scattering theory, and then using the phase shift, you will be able to express so-called spin hole angle, which is uh, spin hole conductivity divided by electric conductivity. Okay, and, uh, and so now then we needed to plug in some numbers. The number is from my uh, relative spin structure calculation, which we we can estimate phase shift for each partial wave by using so-called Friedel sum rule, which is if you know orbital occupation number, then you can translate that into phase shift, and then you plug it into this expression I, uh, we derived before, and then you can estimate spin hole angle, which is about 0.1, which is close to 0.1 uh, observed by Sendai group. Okay? And, but is that the end of story? Okay, and apparently not. Okay, this is the... Uh, uh, when our paper was published, um, the paper was highlighted by editor asking this uh, condo expert, P.A. Coleman from uh, Rutgers, Universe, uh, Rutgers University. He, he commented our paper say, lending an iron hand into spintronic. Okay? Now, the problem is that uh, you want to become famous, but not too famous. Otherwise, people will examine all your details. Okay? And this is exactly what happened. Then people wrote to me and said that, uh, hey, we already measured this X-ray magnetic circular dichroism, and we did not observe orbital angular momentum in predict. Okay, so what's going on? Your model can be wrong, okay? Um, now, then another paper in appear just the uh, next issue of PRL. They also say that uh, the condo model should not be like uh, we propose, okay? Then, um, of course, if you are a cloud theoretician, want to defend yourself, you need to do something more. Okay, this is exactly 
what I uh, did with uh, a postdoc from uh, Tohoku University at that time by uh, uh, led by Professor Mayakawa. Uh, uh. Now we construct a so-called single impurity Anderson model to study quantum effect. Okay, and then we saw this using quantum Monte Carlo because uh, the band theory is effectively one electron main field theory, so cannot say anything uh, directly about the quantum effect. But quantum Monte Carlo, we used to solve this uh, uh, multi-orbital Anderson uh, impurity problem, and indeed from this uh, calculus susceptibility, we found the two quantum temperature. Okay. One with a higher temperature, maybe in the order of room temperature, and the other with a, 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 a temperature which is traditionally, like a traditional system, very low. Okay? But then we further include spin orbit coupling. But of course, many body calculation is very tough. We can only include very simplified version of spin orbit coupling, which is called icing like spin orbit coupling. And this is the, the main result here. Let me try to explain this uh, complicated diagram. Here, we, if you do not include on-site uh, Coulomb interaction, and this spin orbit coupling parameter is very small, that means uh, you will not observe a spin fault effect. Okay? But you gradually increase uh, uh, on-site Coulomb interaction, which you can do computer experiment for that. Okay? And so you can see that this uh, parameter increase dramatically when you have uh, 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 on-site Coulomb U equal to 5 EV. That's what I used before in the band structure calculation. But you can also imagine that uh, you can apply magnetic field, okay, which then can induce uh, magnetic moment uh, to the to the system. But the moment was screen when condo effect take place, okay, and but the when you increase this induced uh, spin magnet moment, this parameter decreases eventually to zero. Okay, now we can explain why this uh, uh, mag X-ray magnet circular dichroism, which nowadays you can easily perform in sin to synchrotron radiation center. Okay, and we now propose that uh, because you need to apply magnetic field quite a strong. Uh, to line all the imperial moment up. So that will kill orbital moment. Okay? So then we find a way to explain uh, why people do not see uh, orbital angular momentum uh, there. Okay? Now, the second question, of course, is very important. Uh, from this quantum Monte Carlo calculation, what's the spin hall angle you get? Okay? Using the same formula, and we can estimate phase shift and put the phase shift here, and uh, uh, I would get uh, uh, spin hall angle about 0.06. Okay, eventually uh, that's uh, same order magnitude, although it's only half our experimental value originally report, but uh, it's the same order magnitude. But uh, I was very happy to to uh, to talk to this uh, Koki uh, some time ago, and they told me happily told me that. Uh, they perform the experiment again. Now this time they intentionally dope gold hobart with the ion. Okay, before they were unintentionally incorporated. And now they change the concentration. And indeed, for all these samples, they found the same spin hole angle. Okay? Now the reason is that the mechanism we propose is due to skew scattering. So that suggests that the, the spin hole angle should not depend on ion concentration. And this is exactly their fun. Okay? So now, from my point of view, uh, this uh, story is uh, quite uh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> and this uh, now. That's because you are right. One. Well, well, it cannot be always right. <laughs> okay. Now, um, so this will be a summary of uh, my talk. First, I hope I tell you that the spin hole effect is, uh, is a kind of uh, uh, special relative effect, but it's rich of. Very uh, interesting fundamental phase, and also relate to uh, a classical phenomenon in condensed matter such as condo effect. Okay, now spin hole effect can be used to generate detector and also dry magneto uh, device. Okay, so have important, hopefully have important application in spin.
and uh, other um, initial device. So, but here I want to say that the uh, initial band structure calculation can actually play a very important role by revealing the mechanism, but also help experiment people to search for a new spintronic material. And uh, your recent intensive research on spin hall effect also uh, led us to, cre uh, to the creation of new hot topics such as topological insulate and the spin carry Now, finally, I needed to thank many people, including Chen Liu and uh, Yao Yu Gui, his postdoc, and uh, my student, now he's in Song Yisheng University, and also uh, uh, colleague, Professor Chen Liang Bang and his experimental team, and uh, Japanese scientist Nakaosa, Murakami uh, Mayakawa, and also Gu Po. And uh, uh, very importantly, our National Science Council for funding. And finally, for your attention. Let's thank uh, Huan Yu to, uh, for giving us such a very interesting talk and review of the development of the uh, spintronics. And uh, I have to be honest, this is a, what the first time I feel the theoretic talk can be so interesting. And really, <laughs> <laughs> it's related to what we are doing. <laughs> okay. Any questions? So motion that is more symmetric after you add the, yeah. uh, the very first term. Is there a uh, profound symmetry reason behind it, or <coughs> or just be, or, or just the uh, equations just look more symmetric by theirs? Actually, uh, it's not as that simple. Um, I do not know very deep theoretical framework why why these two equations should be look so symmetric and beautiful. But uh, that's the basic instinct of Niu Chen and uh, uh, Zhang Mingzhe. So, but uh, they happen to be working on very phase effect on transport for many, many years. But then they come across this problem and uh, uh, sorry, it might be this point. You mentioned that the, uh, uh, one of the really important <coughs> remarks mm. about the spin charge effect and magnitude device, <laughs> then uh, you can solve the at least anti physics. Uh, you know, <laughs> 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 um, mm. But I may step down already. <laughs> but what, what kind of device that, um, that you're talking about then? Uh, 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 can replace the, the presence of CMOS. Yeah, I think uh, you probably know better answer than me. You are experimentalist and you are working on 5 nanometer technology. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so far I only found that group, what I call uh, Lumen, or you probably know that uh, the, 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 who published science paper. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, Su Yan also know better than I do. Uh, but that's, uh, but that's even not only one, but that's a very important uh, uh, application. Um, let me uh, maybe go back. Some of my <coughs> remote control is not working. Um, actually, I. Okay, which one? Yeah, this one. So, uh, I think this, uh, how many? This would be very good. This is TMR junction. Okay, which uh, I think uh, in the previous uh, our colloquium, Sue also mentioned about that. And this can be uh, a very important element in uh, this uh, new magnetic memory uh, technology. Uh, it is, I mean, of course, spin choice is already have uh, a device in, in uh, memory uh, devices. Yeah, it's not, that's not all, yeah. Uh, I think it's more important than 
적극적인 비용, 시모스, 야, 파이네노. What h a p p e n e x t Yeah. No, I, 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 I pray you to, to uh, you know, jump out of you, 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 your butt. You think about all reality, not just t e m a s yeah. alone. I mean, yeah. no, no, no. To me, it's very realistic already. Okay, don't push yeah. too far. <laughs> Uh, I, have a, I have a question about if the condo is back, you know, when you first see this uh, uh, yeah. fantasy experiment, you know, you got this uh, very large, you know, uh, spin-off kind of community, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's only a combination, right? Yeah. So presumably there are very, very few iron a p e n s right? That's right, so, yeah. Right. So this can have such a big effect, and then if you, you know, put a lot of uh, You know, how does this uh, connectivity vary with this uh, oh, uh, ion? The, 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 the yeah. spin hole angle. No, I, I, if we don't, you know, the spin hole angle is almost the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of because it how is. about the other properties? We should, there should be yeah. some property that is uh, concentration dependent, right? Yeah, the, this kind of conclusion a s s u m e we have dilute impurity. Okay. So called dilute, by dilute I mean Impurity has no interaction, mm -hmm. but it still can add more, more, and more impurity. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's a critical point mm -hmm. where impurities start to interact. So okay. in this case, then the 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 conclusion I make cannot be applied. Okay, so that's the critical concentration. Uh, I'm up limit. I can talk about this kind of uh, spin or angle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in your uh, introduction. Uh, say the, the traditional uh, Hoi effect, you show the E plus E minus, they go to different sides yeah. due to Lorentz Fossil, but I saw it's the same side, right? They can tell what the majority carries. No? I mean, the uh, well, that's, uh, that's an important technique our chairman used, and Professor Chen and everybody using in semiconductor to determine carry concentration and type of carry. Uh, let me. The second page or something. Yeah. yeah. So, so E plus E minus. This uh, electron current going that way. Yeah. Okay. And the electron going that way, isn't it? Now, yes. so the same side, right? So you can tell what the majority. No, you get confused. It's the electron and hole. It has a name. This is the uh, hole going that way. But oh, oh, okay, okay. I I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Now, if we assume only one type of carrier. So this, uh, this, the sign of this whole coefficient will depend on the, ch the sign of charge yeah. of carrier. Yeah. But uh, of course, I did not, <laughs> did not say how it's dependent on that. Well, he knows better than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now this, I understand, is a very important need to determine okay. carrier concentration also type of carrier. Electron accumulation of yeah. on one side, right? Because of the char charge balance, you have to positive yeah. charge on the other side. But then, you know, with the same magnetic field, electron will, you know, if it, the conduction is electron, maybe like this side is more, a higher voltage than that, and we could just hold it. It's I mean, cool. this is uh, in general physics course. I remember you also taught about that. <laughs> I was nervous because the previous page. I got the sign wrong, and uh, after my talk, some people say that you, you are always in force, it's, it's wrong. <laughs> uh, thank you for your interesting talk. I have a two simple question. Do we need iron impurity to have a multi up to condo effect? Do we need film impurity or normal impurity can also have this up to condo effect? Uh, second question is, uh, in your calculation, you score with the iron impurity. Both are heavy metal. Recently, people find the light metal dope with heavy metal can have a large before angle, like copper dope, 0.5% of business. Okay. Yeah, you are obviously an expert. <laughs> the first question is that you do need uh, magnetic impurity. I, you, not necessarily a fellow magnetism, but uh, you need uh, the imperial have local moment. And uh, in order to have multi-orbital conduct effect, so you need uh, 
the, the valence shell, like a D shell, which is partially filled. So with these two conditions, it might have a multi-orbital contact. Now, the second question <laughs> uh, is uh, critical. Okay, I, um, uh, actually, I, last semester, I took uh, my sabbatical leave, and I spent two months with, uh, <laughs> with the Inger Mati group, and he's, she is the one did the calculation you mentioned, okay? But uh, they have also a story how this giant spin hole effect occurred. But their theory is that uh, if you dope gold with a light atom, okay, but the potential difference is so huge, because if you have gold, which is big and large and heavy, if you dope with a nitrogen, okay, which is small and tiny. Now, imagine the electron passing through this kind of impurity. You will also feel a very uh, strong uh, scattering potential. So, so they explain that uh, that's why they're doing first principle calculation with this kind of light element impurity. They also find uh, um, a giant uh, spin hole effect. Okay? Um, because I, I had their slides in my <laughs> because I want to point out that life is always uh, complicated. <laughs> but uh, because of time, so I did not put this in. But nevertheless, uh, this can maybe some experimental can deliberately dope with the nitrogen or boron to see whether you can also find giant spin hole effect. I think uh, this would maybe open for experimental people to differentiate. Uh. I uh, see that you explain the spin hole effect by two different mechanisms. One is intrinsic, the yeah. other extrinsic. That's right. So the intrinsic actually, I think, is already constrained by the material. Yeah. So in the future, if you want to increase the spin hole effect, we must I think, go through the extrinsic mechanism. Is that uh, right? Um, I'm not sure, but I think intrinsic is more stable, isn't it? Because it is already built in the sample. Another thing is that spin hole angle for a for heavy element like platinum, and also uh, some of the system found by uh, uh, Professor Fan Siyan. And for tungsten tung and uh, tungsten, they already have very large spin hole angle. So they, as demonstrated by by this group, I, I still can't pronounce his name. And so. Uh, they already can use this uh, pendulum to draw magneto device. But if we want to uh, simple, pure metal to draw that, and this is actually better. But to me, impurity concentration may be difficult to control. But you, I mean, I always admire experiments, they are very smart. <laughs> okay, so. Uh... Okay. Okay, this will be the last one. Okay. The uh, whole effect is uh, many Nobel Prize in this field. Uh, <laughs> maybe this will get another one. From your point of view, uh, why it's so important in uh, physics, or especially in physics, the whole effect? Thank you. To get a Nobel Prize. Thank you. Um, my answer on my guess, I think it's not very important. Okay. Because uh, this we are not getting a Nobel Prize. <laughs> but quantum spin hole, maybe. You know that uh, uh, our vice president, Zhang Qinrui, already invited Zhang Shouchen to be our, what do you call, audible research chair professor, okay? Because of this uh, quantum spin hole effect and topology injury, he already got the Dirac medal, okay? Now people speculate if more experiments have been carried out on the quantum spin hole effect. The three people, Charlie Ken, Oren Kahn, and uh, Zhang Shaoqian, might get the Nobel Prize. That's my guess. Don't call to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, Monokov is also our dis distinguished professor. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let's thank uh, Wang Yi for his uh, wonderful talk again. <laughs>